So I want to acknowledge the audience uh, comes from different contexts, cultures, and languages. And so it's such a pleasure to be part of the presence of Excellency, honorable speakers, and distinguished guests from all over the world. But personally, I also lived in South Africa for two years uh, to do research on slum upgrading and also African cities at the University of Cape Town as visiting, visiting researcher uh, in between 2011 to 2013. But in this session, I really try to give you a brief overview of, well, sound like a big picture to everyone. Uh, I'd like to start with this great reset uh, in order to find ourselves at a historic crossroads. So next year's World Economic Forum, as you might know, will be held in January to discuss an opportunity uh, to reflect, reimagine, and reset our world. So within this theme of the forum, I could find main three keywords, uh, well-being, circular economy, and multi-stakeholder engagement. So are these for what? For the human and planetary health. As you have noticed, so planetary boundaries, as you know, describes the fact of crossing environmental limits. So at this point, as you can see, several environmental pressures have exceeded key planetary boundaries that define a safe operating space for humanity. So crossing planetary boundaries would increase the risk of destabilizing essential ecosystem. Food systems, for example, has a potential to nurture human and planetary health. However, our current trajectories threaten both. As you know, food production is responsible for about a quarter of all greenhouse gas emissions and agriculture occupied more than south of the earth's surface. So without comprehensive approaches, we estimated the environmental pressure of the food system could increase by 50 to 90% by 2050 as a result of population growth and the continued westernized of diet. So food system is also a major driver of climate change. So in this regard, we must put the human and planetary health at the heart of the discussion point of global engagement strategy, in particular, the post-pandemic world. But how should we do? So we need a foundation and strategies to take action in the multi-stakeholder partnership manner. And also from what to how at this moment to the future. But before taking actions, we need the foundation principle for people and the planet in the era of Anthropocene, where humans are the largest drivers of change on this planet. So according to Professor Noriichi Kanie at Keio University, Japan, the concept of sustainable development should adapt to the reality in the Anthropocene. So three pillars, as you know, environment, economy, and society have been the concept in the past. And now we have to move on to integration within the three. So furthermore, we should keep in mind the integration will also need implications for global governance, as you discussed before. So from the perspective of global governance and global engagement, I believe that planetary ethics and principle would be indispensable to co-create planetary shared values by using the SDGs. So as you have noticed, we have been forced to recognize that its law of nature clearly dictates the basic conditions of the world and the evolution of all living things. So as the Earth Shadow International Council member, 
I would like to share with you the 40th General Conference of UNESCO in 2019, adopting a resolution that reaffirms the importance of Earth Charter as an ethical framework for sustainable development. The Earth Charter is a universal declaration of the human responsibilities to one another, to the greater community of life, and the future generations founded on the recognition that we are one human family and one us community with a common destiny. So it is the emerging global consciousness and planetary ethic that finds articulation in intergovernmental and civil society declarations like the Charter of the United Nations and the United Nations uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the Earth Charter. So the shared ideas and values in these declarations forms the core of the common faith for us centered and people-centered ethic that builds caring for us and caring for people as two interrelated aspects of one great task. So in order to accelerate open innovation and social implementation, we need to drive a change with mindset for people, organizations, companies, governments, definitely universities by promoting science, technology, innovation for SDGs and education for sustainable development. So as you know, from the perspective of the human and planetary health, Africa Agenda 2063, the Global 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and the High Fives offer a unique opportunity for Africa to achieve inclusive, transformative and sustainable development. There is a high degree of convergence between the continent priorities as embodied in these three agendas. So the imperative of adapting an integrated and coherent strategy for the effective and coordinated implementation of the three agenda is therefore comparing for the human and planetary health in Africa. So in accordance with the Africa agendas, Japanese government held the seventh Tokyo International Conference on African Development, Ticket 7, in Yokohama, Japan last year. The government of Japan has been leading this conference since 1993, co-hosted by United Nations, UNDP, World Bank, and African Union Commission. So under the theme Advancing Africa's Development, through people, technology, and innovation, Japan's contribution to Africa was announced as the ticket seven, as you can see in here. But in light of the human and planetary health, as mentioned above, I'd like to focus on here achieving human security and SDGs. In particular, promote UHC and the Africa Health and Wellbeing Initiative and provide quality education and ensure sustainable urban development. Well, regarding the collective health, so human and planetary health, the Japanese government hosted the G20 ministers meeting last year in Okayama city, where my university is located. So they had active discussion on three themes as you can see here. So on the, on the topic of achievement of UHC, the G20 health minister discussed how they would contribute to the achievement of UHC by 2030. So to consider Africa in focus, I'd like to highlight these two topics in particular in here. And I just want to also, give you a one or two minute mark, uh, Professor yes, Yoko, okay, very thank sorry. You. Yes, sure. So if you also consider population health, we will require a focus on cities because the rapid urbanization across Africa is characterized by a growing number of people, currently more than 60% of urban dwellers who live in dense informal settlements. The largest role of this growing slum area is now contributing to the emergence of infection disease. 
The COVID-19 in particular has revealed significant deficiencies in our existing urban infrastructure development and planning as a critically inclusive system for health. So when considering the health impact of new pathogens like COVID-19, it's really helpful to think about the characteristics of the host and the interaction between host and pathogens. The environment of the host is definitely a major factor in their health and therefore their vulnerability to COVID-19 in several ways. So in terms of the human planetary health, we have developed societies that disrupt the ecology, increase vulnerability to disease, and also facilit facilitate disease transmission, and in which many are unable to take necessary preventive precaution or to access care. So I would say, how is this not a crisis of civilization? So the COVID-19 pandemic is also a wake-up call to one of our vulnerability food system and an insight into the ongoing threat post posed by the climate crisis. The Secretary General of the United Nations will convene the Food System Summit in 2021 to raise global awareness and enhance global commitments and actions that transform food system. And also last but not the least, in response to the human planetary health, Okayama University, my university, has contributed to the SDGs as a very first Asian institution establishing UNESCO chair in education for sustainable development, ESD, approved by UNESCO in 2007. So since then, we have been working together with Okayama City for ESD and beyond it towards SDGs for a decade in a multi-stakeholder partnership manner, which resulted in to be awarded UNESCO ESD Award in 2016 and UNESCO Running City Award in 2017. So as such, this is a final slide, <laughs> by the way. Um, the providing quality education. So we concluded our MOU with UNCTAD in last January, 2020 to nurture young female scientists from Africa and other some regions in light of science, technology, innovation for SDGs. So now UNCTAD and my university, Okayama University, completed to select representative participants from UN member states across Africa and the some region for this program starting from this early November. Well, let me stop here once again. Thank you all for joining us at my presentation in particular. Thank you very much. Thank you, Laura. We're gonna turn, um turn it to the questions and we're going to go back and forth um, with my co-moderator asking questions. So the first one um, I want to raise um, is we, we heard from Professor Yokoi um, regarding sustainability and the importance of kind of those um, goals and focus uh, being at the, at the lead of when we think about it. I thought it was also really fascinating to hear about a particular conference in Japan uh, that focuses on, on uh, African development. So um, my question to you would be um, what do you think are the areas that are most uh, critical for development collaboration between Japan uh, and African countries? Uh, what are some necessary steps that you think need to be taken uh, for these collaborations to, to happen? Well, as you know, Japan uh, has a big event ticket uh, every three a year, actually. And last year we had ticket seven. And TICA7 is really a broad platform for anyone, for everyone uh, from Africa and beyond. And particularly uh, based on the declaration of TICA7 uh, last year, it's about uh, developing industrial human resources and promote innovation and investment. And also, as I mentioned before, promote UHC and the Africa Health and Wellbeing Initiative and as well as building institutions and enhance governance and, and also uh, provide quality education. Uh, that's a main focal point from Japan through the ticket seven. And also, uh, if you'd like to participate in this event, ticket seven, uh, you have a wide variety of doors uh, for this event. Uh, first of all, uh, as you discussed before, uh, about, for example, African startups. So TICA7 really uh, have opportunity uh, for African entrepreneur, entrepreneurs and the business sectors uh, 
uh, through JETRO uh, Startup Corporation. Uh, as you might know, JETRO is really one of the Japanese governmental uh, organizations uh, to support African business and startup projects. And also uh, in terms of SME, SMEs and SDGs businesses in Africa, the uh, Japanese government also support formulation of digital public goods to accelerate innovation in public and private sector through TKI 7 as well. And also if you think about uh, people, particularly, uh, well, education, uh, Japanese government and also TKI 7 they provide a wide variety of uh, opportunities uh, at any level. Uh, for example, a university student and also young professional. And particularly my university as well, for example, uh, my university is by the way, a national university and with 11 faculties and eight graduate school and three uh, national institutions. Uh, uh, such a national university have also a wide variety of doors for African professional and also uh, senior leaders uh, to educate in terms of uh, STI, science, technology, innovation for SDGs, and also uh, through education for sustainable development uh, launched by UNESCO for more than a decade. Uh, okay, well, let me stop here, by the way. Uh, but my point is really the Japan, Japanese government have a wide variety of doors at any level and also for any sectors. Thank you.